Hi, Dr. Rolando Toyos here. Tonight we're going to talk about optimum IPL in the time of COVID. So one of the things, once uh, COVID broke out, we realized that we we're going to have to change some things, make patients wear masks, make the doctors and techs wear masks. But one of the biggest things that we did is we actually separated our, our clinic into two spaces. So on this side of our clinic, this is the general ophthalmology side of our clinic where we see our patients who are our cataract patients, our retina uh, patients like age-related macular degeneration, our glaucoma patients. These are older patients that are more susceptible to uh, COVID and viruses and, and becoming sick. So we wanted to separate them out from our other patients, which are our aesthetics, uh, LASIK, and our dry eye patients. So actually our I, optimum IPL system is here over on the aesthetic side. So if you come with me, it's a little bit more comfortable, more relaxed, a little bit more vibrant art uh, when these patients come in. And then this is our IPL room. So I'm here with the optimum IPL and we're gonna go through some various treatments. We're gonna do a dry eye treatment, a chalazian treatment, we're gonna do a facial rejuvenation treatment, we're gonna do a treatment for acne and a treatment for dark spots. You should explain to the patient that they will need four treatments. One treatment every three to six weeks for four sessions. Usually I find that three to four weeks is best. There is no follow-up needed after an intense pulse light treatment. The patient will see you for their next visit where you can examine them and then set them up for their next treatment. After the patient has gone through the four treatment protocol, they'll be needing maintenance treatments. In our clinic, we have the patient come back three months after their last IPL treatment. At that examination, we can determine when they will need a maintenance treatment. Usually patients need maintenance treatments every six months to a year. It is best that the patient avoid the sun prior to treatments and immediately after the treatment. After a treatment, they can use a sunblock or protect with a hat. IPL treatments are recommended for patients who have Fitzpatrick 1 to Fitzpatrick 4. We do not treat patients who have Fitzpatrick 5 or 6. Basically, I wear a mask. The patient's wearing a mask till we start treating. The great thing about the Optimum IPL is actually IPL has been shown to kill viruses, bacteria, so it's gonna kill COVID once we start treating around the skin. Here we come to the screen, we go to the stethoscope. It's gonna give you two options, by clinical, by name, by clinical you can use to, if you wanted to do rosacea or other treatments, it, all you have to do is pick the right skin color, either Fitzpatrick, one, two, three, four and five and then pick the type of treatment that you want to do or you can go by name and here you'll find my parameters so these are parameters that I've uh, worked on over the years doing various skin types you can put that in and what you're going to see is we're going to take full advantage of the optimum IPL where we're going triple pulses and then using energy uh, on and off. I'll do six milliseconds on with 50 milliseconds off. If you get darker and darker skin colors, this is where the Optimum IPL really excels, where you're not just limited to just one skin type. If you wanna do skin type four or five, sometimes what I'll do is I will start lengthening the thermal relaxation time. So I can go from uh, 50 and say I'm doing somebody darker skin than myself, I can increase that thermal relaxation time. Uh, and let's do that here. You just push on the button here. And you can increase all the way up to a maximum of 150. And then if you want that on both thermal relaxation times on a triple pulse, you just press equal. And that will give you the 150. So that's important because if you can increase the thermal relaxation time in somebody who is darker, 
you'll have less chances of doing any adverse events to their skin. What happens with old IPL systems, when you get into darker skin levels, you can cause burning because they don't have the ability to actually increase that thermal relaxation time. To get it back to our normal parameters, we'll press here. Okay, now it's back to my normal parameters. Then here, here's where I play with the jewels. If I'm doing somebody who has darker skin, I'll do uh, less energy. So for me, I would do 10 joules. And as you go up, uh, you can increase the number of joules for patients with lower Fitzpatrick uh, skin type. So a type one, you may go 16 to 14. Uh, type 2, 14 to 13. Type 3, 12 to 10. Type 4s, uh, 10. And then we'll talk about what we're going to do for Chalazian. So this is parameters based on we're going to do a dry eye treatment. And then the Optimum IPL actually has a chiller plate. So distilled water is going through here. It's chilled so that this foot plate isn't hot when you're doing the treatments and you're not burning uh, epidermis. So in the back here, here's where you have the distilled water that's feeding water into the chiller plate. And you always want to make sure that the water is full. So I usually have it above this luminous line here. So we're going to fill up uh, some water. So all you have to do is uh, unscrew this, fill it up with water, screw it back on. And then you load it back up, and then uh, you're ready to go. To change the tip, what you want to do is lift this. You can take out a tip and put a different tip. So this is the tip that we're going to be using for a chalazion right on the uh, lid, on a specific part of the lid. So put this back and you can change filters. So what the filter is doing, it's blocking all the wavelengths of light that you don't want. So a 590 filter is gonna block all the wavelengths below 590 and allow all the wavelengths of above 590 to go through. When we're talking about a lot of the treatments uh, today, basically the 590 filter is what we're gonna be using for dry eye, for chalazion. You can use the 590 for uh, acne, you could use it for rosacea, you could use it for dark spots. Essentially, the red light, which is wavelength 600 to 700, is what we want in most of these treatments. So that's why you see that. But if you ever program it and it tells you to put a different filter, you can always take out this 590 filter and use one of the other filters, so say like a 615 or you could change it out to a 640. One of the good things about the, op, the Optimum IPL is that when you uh, pick on clinical, it will actually go ahead and tell you which filter to put in. But again, for what we're doing with dry eye, chalazion, acne, the 590 uh, filter works the best. Okay, so we have our parameters, and then I'm going to decide. So she's going to get a lot of IPL treatments today, so we're going to go ahead and just stick to uh, 10 joules. The way to think of this is when you're giving the treatment on a triple pulse, you're giving energy, thermal relaxation time, energy, thermal relaxation time, and energy. And if you're doing 10 joules, you're giving them 10 joules of energy, and then we're gonna do a double pass. So uh, trachis to trachis, and then another trachis to trachis. So essentially you're giving them a total of 20 joules in each, uh, in, in each treatment. The glasses, this will protect the user from uh, the light flashing uh, back to them. So these wavelengths of light actually recognize pigment. 
So there's a report out of Bascom Palmer where somebody was doing uh, treatments. They didn't cover uh, the eyes of the patient. They were flashing right on the eyes. And what it showed is that you can get translumination defects. I actually have uh, two uh, patients that I've been called on, same thing. The patient wasn't properly covered. The light was absorbed by the iris. They have uh, some iritis. Nobody at this point uh, from any of the literature or from anybody that's contacted me has ever had any retina problems from light flashing, but you want to protect yourself, you want to protect the patient. All right, so the first treatment we're going to demonstrate is a dry eye treatment. So basically, COVID-wise, you want to just pull that mask down, but you don't have to pull it all the way off for a dry eye treatment. You want the patient to look up, you want to get right underneath the eyelashes, close, and this gives you maximum exposure to the lower lid. And look up and close, and this is maximum exposure to the lower lid. All right, so if you're gonna treat, you're gonna use some coupling gel, and you're gonna go trachis to trachis, and then you're gonna press start, and then what you're gonna do is start here, And you can see the triple pulsing. So I increase the thermal relaxation time so you could really appreciate the triple pulse. So this is gonna be a two pass treatment. We tried one pass, two passes, three passes, and four passes, and this is the best way to get the energy. And then these are the important shots right here where you wanna get right at the lid margin so energy can get to the lid margin. And again, I've increased the thermal relaxation time to 150, so you can really appreciate the triple pulses. Good. And then you want to wipe your foot plate so that the coupling gel doesn't stick on and cause a mess later. So I always clean these right after. And then a neat way to get these patients and get the coupling gel off is to just use, you could use a tongue depressor or whatever. This will save on using a bunch of tissues. So I actually use the little sheet where the eye shields come from. So I get them cleaned and then I follow up with a Kleenex here to get them clean and then they are ready for expression. All right, so right after IPL, we're gonna do expressions. I give them a drop of a numbing drop in each eye. This is prepare cane. You can use whatever numbing drop that you want. Then they come over to the slit lamp and they put their chin right in there. So there's two types of expressors that I use. You can either use Q-tips or Oculus is gonna be coming out with a silicon uh, expressor. Patients like the silicon, they feel like it's less disruptive to uh, the conjunctiva. And we express both upper and lower. So I go beneath the meibomian gland and I squeeze. So 
that's how you do lower. Now for upper, I have the patient look down. And we do lower. Now, say the patient is squeezing hard. One thing that you can do is you can go, let's show you on this one. The patient's squeezing hard. You can always go underneath the lower lid to protect the cornea and just squeeze. Protect the lower, protect the cornea by using the lower lid and squeeze. Now, if you want to do upper lids, you have the patient close their eye. You use the shields to cover the eyelashes. You don't need internal shields. This light will not penetrate. We just published our paper on upper lids. For upper lids, you always want to use 10 joules of energy. You don't want to use above 10 joules. What happens in upper lids is since you have the orbital brow here, that energy uh, has no place to go. So when you're actually treating somebody, what's happening is that energy is diffusing out through the dermis. When you get the here, and what I found uh, experimenting and treating upper lids is that orbital rim keeps a lot of energy uh, down in the upper lid when you're treating upper lid. So uh, you don't want to use more than 10 joules because the upper lids can't take it. And then this is where you can use your other tip. So instead of using this tip for the upper lid, so like we were showing before, you want to unlock, pull this tip out, pull in a smaller tip. Then you want to apply some coupling gel. And then what you're going to do is right on the lid, 10 joules. Same thing, we're going to do two passes. Now the only time I really do upper lids is when I see that their patient has an upper lid problem as well as a lower lid problem. Most patients come in with meibomian gland dysfunction and their lower lids are much worse than their upper lids. When you're applying energy to the lower lid, a lot of that energy will filter up into the uh, upper lid. Now, um, for patients who have a chalazion, it's the same thing. I do, for the upper lid, if their chalazion is right there, I would do two treatments right to the chalazion, right on it. And then right after that, then I would do expression. So with dry eye treatments or chalazion, I always do expression right after. I've written a blog on why to do expression with uh, IPL. The heat that you're generating within the dermis is over uh, and close to 50 uh, uh, degrees Celsius. That actually will melt thick toothpaste-like secretions so that you can easily express them. If you don't express these secretions, in about an hour, those secretions will harden again and they'll just block the gland. So if you look at how the meibomian gland is set up, it is like a test tube with little outpouchings. If you just leave those secretions in there, they'll just sit there. But when you do expression from the bottom up, uh, you can get all of those abnormal secretions out and allow room so that normal secretions can come in. All right, so that is a treatment for upper lids and chalazion. Now, say you do a dry eye treatment and the patient wants a full face. You could easily do that. So the 
protocol for that is you do your dry eye treatment and then you're going to come here and apply gel to the other parts of the face and the only spot that you don't treat don't treat the upper lid even women have hair follicles there IPL is actually a treatment for uh, hair removal so I stay away from the upper lip men and women and then IPL stimulates the thyroid so you don't want to treat underle underneath the jawline for the rest of the face you can give them a little bit more energy so for example if you gave them 12 for a dry eye treatment for the rest of the face it's thinner skin than the thinnest skin of the body which is the lids so you can go ahead and give them two more jewels than what you gave them for dry eye so if you gave them 12 jewels for dry eye you can give them 14 jewels and then what I do is the same pattern and you're trying to go, you want to stick to being above the jawline. Then I go ahead and have them purse their lips so that I can get more exposure here around the chin. And purse. And then forehead. And then we would do that one more pass. So this is the same way that I treat acne. This is the same way that I treat rosacea. Go ahead and purse. For acne, if it's a teenager, a kid, I will just do 10 joules. You don't need a lot of energy for acne. When we're talking rosacea, to close off talonjectasias, you want to use more energy. Just realize the more energy you use, the more redness that you're going to have afterwards but for example on a rosacea patient I would probably do about 16 joules for an acne patient I would probably just do 10 joules that's all you need to kill that bacteria on the skin for facial rejuvenation you could do 14 joules uh, would be enough for the rest of the face all right so she's had her now full face so in patients who have dry eye that say, oh, I want full uh, the rest of the face, so we charge them for what we would do for dry eye, and then we charge them a little extra if they want a full face. All right, so she's got some sun spots here. Now say you want it, say the patient had melasma or a little sun spot, a little brown spot somewhere that you want it to, to treat. So what I do for those is, uh, one thing is, if you're going to do aesthetics, pictures are key. So I would take a picture of them beforehand, and I would take a picture of their spot. So let's just say she's got a little sun spot right there, which she does. So what you do with that is you just apply a little bit of gel, and then we're specifically just treating a sun spot. And then you're going to hit that spot uh, two times. So you can uh, use the same parameters that I have for uh, dry eye, or you can go to the clinical uh, view and push those parameters. In terms of treating uh, sunspots, melasma, any kind of hyperpigmentation, you can come over here to the stethoscope by clinical, then you pick the skin type. So you have one, two, three, four, and five. So let's say it's skin type three. And then you can pick uh, 
uh, PWS, and let's just say adult type, and you want medium depth uh, for these pigmented spots, press OK. And then it will go ahead and already tell you uh, the parameters that you're using. So here it's telling you uh, double pulse with a pulse length of 4.5 milliseconds and then a thermal relaxation of 20 uh, milliseconds. So let's come over here and then I do the same thing is a, I do a actual uh, double treatment. So we'll press ready. One, two. But you could also use my parameters and just give a little bit more energy. And then what I do with patients with hyperpigmentation it usually it takes about three treatments and then in between treatments I will uh, go ahead and have them use a skin lightener at night before they go to bed so they can use a 4% hydroquinone. We use Kojilac uh, from our skincare line called iScience and usually after about two to three treatments that uh, pigment is gone. Now what it's doing, it's actually taking melanin out of the melanocyte, but the melanocyte is still there. So if they get back in the sun, the melanin in that dark spot will come uh, back. So what you want to do is make sure that they're using a blocker. I like a blocker like zinc, which is actually completely blocking the rays of sun from uh, penetrating the skin. Now, the way you think of uh, zinc, that's like the Baywatch show where you see the lifeguards putting the, the white zinc on their skin. There's actually now zinc products that have a little bit of color to them so it doesn't uh, appear that you, like the, uh, the lifeguards with the big white splotch on their skin. It just naturally blends in your skin and it blocks uh, the sun. And again, we have that in our eye science line. Now the advantages of using the Optimum IPL is since you have the chiller plate, these patients can come sooner for their treatment. If you don't have a chiller plate, what happens is you're burning epidermis every time you're doing IPL and you have to let the epidermis recover. So for, if you look at my older stuff 20 years ago when I had first generation IPL systems, patients would have to wait four to six weeks in between their treatments. With the Optimum IPL, patients can get treatments every two weeks. So in dry eye, it's a four treatment protocol, so they'll get one treatment, come back two weeks later, another treatment, another treatment, another treatment, and then they go into maintenance. The worse the dry eye and the older the patient and the worse the meibomian gland dysfunction, then the uh, sooner that they're going to need a maintenance treatment. So I have patients who get maintenance treatments every four months to one year. I don't usually let patients go uh, longer than one year uh, for their maintenance treatment. In terms of rosacea, that could be two to three treatments uh, with higher energy uh, to close off those talonjectasias. What I find is the talonjectasias is a web of vessels, and after each treatment, you're actually decreasing uh, the number of vessels. With acne, I have some patients who have severe acne, and they come actually once a month for their IPL treatment to control their acne, especially teenagers who have cycles of a couple of years where acne is uh, very high due to uh, their hormonal uh, patterns for that teenage time. For dark spots, usually three treatments does the trick and if they can sun block, uh, the dark spot will not come back. For facial rejuvenation, I usually start with three treatments back to back and then I have them come in for maintenance treatments. IPL, Optimum IPL is a great way to maintain skin and the uh, beauty of the skin. For a Chalazian, usually it's just one uh, treatment. Give them some Tobradex ST to use four times a day. 
and usually the hordeolum chalazion will be gone within about three to four days. If somebody has a big event, so like a wedding or a graduation, they can come in on a Monday or Tuesday, have a facial rejuvenation IPL, then they can use an antioxidant like uh, vitamin C or the grapeseed extract skin, and then by Friday or Saturday, their skin is gonna be glowing. So it's a great way to prep your skin before a big event so that you can look good. Uh, it's a secret to the stars. IPL, Optima IPL is a great investment now during the time of COVID because uh, patients uh, have been at home, their skin has, and their dry eye has gotten much worse and they're gonna be looking for solutions other than drops to treat these things and other than skin creams. So they're gonna need something to rejuvenate the skin, something to rejuvenate those glands to work better. And I find Optimum IPL is the best treatment for acne, rosacea, facial rejuvenation, chalazians, uh, and my bulimic gland dysfunction uh, dry eye. So I hope this gives you a good intro into Optimum IPL for all of these things and it's a great addition to your practice and it gets you into the world uh, if you want to get into the world of aesthetics. So you can purchase one of these for dry eye and chalazians and then you'll find that it could expand the offerings in your clinic into aesthetics. Stay safe everybody. So I hope you enjoyed our Optimum IPL treatment video. I think this is a great technology. I've seen this technology evolve over the course of the last 20 something years that I've been using this treatment for dry eye. But one thing that's really impressive about Intense Pulse Light is that we use it for dry eye, but we use it for so many other things. And I showed you how we use it for rosacea, pigmented lesions, talangiectasias, for facial rejuvenation. One thing is that you will not regret uh, purchasing this technology for your clinic. You will get it, some doctors say, I just want it for the dry eye treatment, but what will happen is patients will start asking, hey, my skin looks great, can you use this for rosacea? Can you use this for, uh, my child has acne, can you use it for that? We turn this system on in the morning and everybody's using it. I'm using it, my optometrists are using it, my wife Melissa Toyos is using it for, Dr. Melissa Toyos is using it for aesthetics, our esthetician is using it for facial uh, rejuvenation and acne. So it's one of those pieces of technology that gets used. And I know you may be thinking this may not be the time to invest in new technology, but I've always found that during the worst of times, that's when you need to reinvest in your practice and that you'll find years later that it was the best move that you've ever made. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something from the video. And I think you'll be happy with your purchase of the Optimum IPL.